I want one of them readers. That's what I want. I want a reader. And so you go out with a girl and you're driving. So what are you reading right now? And all too often, well, I'm not much of a reader. I'm not much of a dinner buyer. Get out, get out, get out, get out. But we're, we're lost in the stucco sprawl of LA. I don't care. Hi, welcome to Honto Ego, Japan's only 99.9% .9 English podcast hosted at my dinner table. My name is Matt, and today I want to talk about a downside of reading, right? Like a bad side of reading. So last week's episode, I talked about、um, the power of reading and reading rainbow and how reading can. You know, improve your mood as well as your,、um, you know, knowledge. But today, I want to talk about the pressure of reading. And this can apply to a lot of hobbies, I think, right? Many hobbies sometimes、uh, they get out of hand and they stop being hobbies and they start feeling like jobs, you know, or like homework or a chore that you have to do, right?、Um, And reading, it's really easy to feel pressured to read, right? So, for me, for my case, I'm an English teacher and a writer, and so books are a big part of my life, right? I love reading and I love writing. So, when someone will ask me, hey, have you read this book? Or have you heard of this you know, book? Have you heard of this writer? Blah, 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 blah. I get this little voice inside of me that says, say yes. No matter what, say yes, right? And I've caught myself too many times lying to people that, like, oh, yeah, yeah,、um, I, I read that book, but、uh, I, I, it was a long time ago. I forget what happened. This was especially true when I was younger, like when I was a teenager.、Um, I felt like, you know, even though I had only been on the earth for, you know, 17, 18 years or whatever. I felt like I had to have read all the classics, right? All the great literature, you know? And so, in, in many cases, I would actually like try to sit down and read through all these classics, right? Like Paradise Lost or Dante's、uh, Inferno, and like some of these pretty old, thick books, right? And, you know, I, I did enjoy a lot of them, but I truly think I, I didn't. Get the deeper understanding of them. You know, I've gone back and I've reread a few classics、uh, now that I'm older, and they hit much harder now. I, I really enjoy them more now. And back then, I, I was just reading them not to enjoy them or not to gain anything from them, but just to check off a list and say, like, yep,、uh, Shakespeare read that, Dante read that, Paradise Lost read that,、um, you know. Checking off boxes so that I can, I don't know, show off to people, right? It was,、uh, I don't know, ego reading, I'll call it. I was reading for my ego and to feel like I was smarter. And so other people would see that,、um, you know, in the, the low chance that someone would say, hey, has anyone here read Shakespeare? Or, you know, everyone's read Shakespeare, but hey, has anyone here read. Cervantes, or something like that, right? And I would be able to say, yes, yes, I have, you know.、Um, not to connect with people, but just so that they would see me as a more enlightened person or a smarter person. That's not good, right? You shouldn't be doing a hobby not for enjoyment, but for like other people's、um, stoking of your ego. You know what I mean? Like other people. Um, praising you and firing you up because, to be honest, I don't think other people care if you've read every great piece of literature, right? So, I guess the main topic I want to talk about today is elitism in regards to literature and reading. So, elitism, E L I T I S M. It means that、uh, you feel like you are elite if you feel like you are better than other people, right? So, an elitist or an elitist person, they think, yeah, I'm so smart, I'm so great,、um, you know, other people wish they were me. And I think that reading 
gets this really bad reputation sometimes as an elitist hobby, you know. Sometimes, like, if you tell people, like, I like reading, they might look at you and think, like, oh, what, you think you're smarter than me? You know, and that, that's totally not true. I mean, I reading is not my only hobby, you know, and it's not like I enjoy it all the time. Sometimes reading can be boring, you know, or sometimes I'm not in the mood for reading. I'm more in the mood for a video game or a, a movie or something like that, right? That happens. But there is some truth in that bad reputation, right? That stereotype of elitist readers comes from a little grain of reality, right? A piece of existence. And what I mean by that is there are people out there who pretend that by reading um, and having read all the great books, you know, out there, which is impossible, but, you know, in their eyes, they think that they are better than other people, you know? Um, or maybe more common than that would be people judging other people's taste. And this happens not only with reading, but with other kinds of hobbies, right? Like, for example, people who enjoy movies, right? Or films, right? Um, you ask somebody, hey, what's your favorite movie? And oftentimes, it's not like they'll say something fun, like, oh, I love Star Wars, you know, since I was a kid, or, oh, um, uh, I don't know, a Marvel movie or something like that, right? Even though many people enjoy those movies, they're seen as lowbrow, right? And lowbrow, meaning like like your eyebrows, right, <laughs> on your forehead, lowbrow means like crude and low quality and cheap and kind of simple and dumb, right? Um, as opposed to highbrow, which is like high art, right? So people always will say that their favorite something something, their favorite music or their favorite movie is some highbrow movie, right? They go like, uh, not Star Wars. Um, yes, I like L'Incendiaire or something like that, right? Oh, it's a, it's a French film. Uh, you haven't seen it? Oh, uh, that's on you, right? And when you look at some of the most popular pieces of literature out there, for example, Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter is hugely popular and it's responsible for getting so many people, young and old, into reading. I think that's a really great thing. But when people say something like, oh, my favorite book is Harry Potter 3 or whatever, right? Some people look at that and they go, oh, a kid's book? You know, um, why don't you try reading some adult fiction, right? So people shame other people because what they like is not cool enough or smart enough or mature enough, right? And I think that's something that we really have to take care to cut out, right? We have to consciously try to stop that kind of elitism. And by doing that, I think we can free ourselves of this pressure to complete our hobbies, right? And I still find myself doing this a lot. Um, you know, I try to balance my reading out and, you know, I try to fit in what is known as required reading. Hmm. What do you think? Are there books and movies and, you know, music albums that you think everyone should listen to? Most of, like, the great pieces of literature are things that they teach in high school right? Or in elementary school, even. Most kids in Canada have read, you know, um, To Kill a Mockingbird, or Charlotte's Web at a younger age, or um, maybe 1984, or something like that, right? And those are all really great pieces of literature, and I think that everyone could benefit from reading them, right? But I don't think people should think of it as homework, right? If people tell you, oh, you have to read this, right? It doesn't become enjoyable. It just becomes another chore, like I said. That's what I've been thinking about lately. I'm kind of rambling right now, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I guess the last thing I want to say on that subject of reading and elitism is with everything in your life, intention is important, right? 
stop and think like, why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, what am I hoping to gain from doing this thing? And am I doing this for the right reason or for a healthy reason? Or am I doing this because I want other people to like me more? Or I think that by doing this, I will like myself more. I don't know if that's why anybody should read. All right. I'm going to shift gears here and kind of uh, talk about a different topic, um, kind of related to what I was saying before. Required reading. Okay. Now, this is kind of going against what I was just ranting about. But I think, you know, if anyone is interested in getting into some of the great pieces of literature, I think that's like a, a noble, good thing to do, you know, if you're doing it for the sake of self-improvement or for, you know, enjoying literature, right? Not to, you know, show off, but just to enjoy literature. So I came across a list the other day. Um, for anybody who lives in the UK, this is probably like super, super famous, maybe. Um, but the BBC, right, the British Broadcasting Company, they hold a annual, I think, a yearly survey where people um, vote on the top 200 novels of all time. Now, note that it's only novels. There are no short stories, uh, no poetry, and no plays. So, for example, Shakespeare will not be on the list. But top 200 novels, I think that's a really great place. You know, reading the list from, you know, 2023 or 2022, I think, um, it's a really great reading list for anybody that is curious about getting into literature the list of 200 books is really diverse and it's a great mixture of like quote unquote high brow and low brow right so there's a lot of harry potter on the list but there's also some more you know mature intelligent stuff if you want to think of it that way right which i don't think you should but uh the most interesting thing i think you look at the top Five, for example, or let's let's read the top ten for now, okay? Number ten is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, right? Considered a classic. Um, that's highbrow, I would say. Number nine, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, right? The most famous Chronicles of Narnia book. So children's fantasy, not necessarily highbrow, but it is well respected, right? Number eight, 1984 by George Orwell. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the books that I think everyone would benefit from reading. Um, but just because it's a great book, not because it's like you're stupid if you haven't read it, right? That's not true. But yeah, I would consider that highbrow, even though it's uh, science fiction. Number seven, Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. So, you know, more children's literature, right? And really cute, um, well-respected, but, you know, not necessarily a very deep read, I think. Number six, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Great American novel. Um, number five, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. So Harry Potter 4, right? Um, interesting to see that as the highest rated Harry Potter book, right? Just the one in the middle of the series. So some may consider that lowbrow, right? And why? Maybe because it's new and it's intended for younger readers and it's fantasy. I don't know. But it must be a great book. I haven't read it. But I saw the movie and that was good. <laughs> Number four, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Right? This is a really fun, silly piece of science fiction. Right? Very uh, ridiculous and tongue-in-cheek and you know, it's a parody of a lot of science fiction. It doesn't take itself very seriously, and I think that's why it's so beloved. Really fun book. Number three, uh, this one I have not read, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I want to say that this is a children's fantasy novel, right? Or a series of children's fantasy books. So you can see already there's a mix. It's almost 50-50 adult fiction and children's fiction. That's interesting. Number two, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, right? Um, another classic of British literature, right? Um, beautiful story. It's beloved, you know, for the past 
200 years, I want to say, almost. Um, 210 years. Okay, and number one, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So that's the trilogy, all three books, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. So number one is, you know, what I would consider to be a children's fantasy novel. Even though Lord of the Rings is very mature and it can be enjoyed by children and adults. But uh, the reason I bring up that list is BBC's The Big Read is a great list, I think. There's a great mix of, you know, ages and genres and seriousness and silliness and, you know, fun and heavy, right? You have like 1984 sitting right next to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, you have Lord of the Rings and Pride and Prejudice sitting right next to each other. I think that's really great. So my advice to you, dear listener, is to look up the BBC's Big Read. Um, And you really can't go wrong reading any of those 200 books, right? You can hover over them. You can see the different genres, right? Okay, this one's fantasy. This one's young adult fiction. This one is science fiction. This one is literary fiction, right? You can find something that's good for you. And keep in mind that Every book is not for everyone. Just like music is very subjective, right? It's based on personal opinion, whether you like it or not. Books are the same way. I think there are some books that are undeniably beautifully written, but there are lots of writers who have arguably bad writing. Um, or let me, let me rephrase that. They have arguably bad style in their writing, right? But... They have great storytelling, or great ideas, or great pacing in their story, right? So I think that there's many different ways that you can enjoy a book. And they can touch you emotionally in a a way that's unique from how they may touch me, right? Or they may not touch you at all, right? And that's when you have to employ the very useful skill of putting a book down for good, right? That can be really uh, looked down upon, right? People can get angry at you for half reading a book. But, you know, some books are long, right? If you're starting an 800-page novel and 50 pages in, you're like, yeah, it's not really grabbing me. Maybe it's not for me. Hey, you're right. Maybe it's not for you. Put it down. Put it back on the shelf. Give it to a friend. Sell it. Um, (laughs) Donate it to a library. I don't know, right? You don't have to read everything. So, in summary, you're not stupid for not reading, right? Um, You're not an idiot if you don't read. Um, I read a lot and I'm still an idiot, right? (laughs) Um, And other people are not stupid if they're reading books that you don't like, right? Um, Don't judge other people based on what they read or don't read. And uh, yeah, just read for pleasure, right? That's totally okay. And for people who say, ah, I, uh, I don't like reading, period. I don't like the act of reading. I mean, hey, that's your choice. That's okay. But I do believe you are denying yourself of an entire branch of human culture, you know. And I think that you're missing out on something that you could really enjoy, right? Just like people that say, ah, I don't really like movies. You know, I tend to think well, maybe you just haven't found the right movie for you, right? So for people that think, oh, um, reading is not for me, I have trouble believing that that's the case. You know, I say maybe take a peek at the top 200 books, um, you know, and see if any of them catch your interest, right? Because reading might just be another undiscovered love for you. All right, thank you for listening to Honto Ego. Um, that's it for today's episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Honto Ego Pod, H O N T O E I G O P O D, on Instagram. Um, you know, there I have book recommendations each week, loosely related to the topics that I talk about here. Um, Got to come up with a book recommendation now. And if you have any questions, you can comment on Instagram or wherever you listen to this podcast, um, maybe on YouTube. And you can send an email to hontoego at gmail.com. 
Thank you for listening, and if you haven't read today, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Bye.